for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ingrid. Um, I've just recently moved to Dubai and I'm a Reiki master and teacher, a yoga and meditation teacher, and um, I'm a holistic therapist. And um, I'm really happy to be working exclusively at Illumination so that I can share these incredible energy healing sessions with the people living in Dubai. And my absolute passion for any of those who have met me or will come and meet me are crystals. For me, crystals are Earth's magic. They are so powerful and they connect us to the Earth energy. And also they're just very beautiful objects to have around. Since I've been a child, I've been connected to crystals, always wanting crystals around me. And I hope for today's webinar, you'll get as excited about crystals as I am. I'll teach you a little bit about crystals, how they're formed, um, and how we can work with crystals personally, and also during treatments as well. I'll take you through some um, crystals that are personal to you through your zodiac sign or your birth month. Um, and then at the end, I'll leave some time for questions and answers. Um, I'm more than happy for you to unmute yourself if you need some clarification about something that I'm talking about. I'm more than happy for those interactions during this next hour. In fact, I welcome any questions. I think it's a great way for us to get even more excited about this magical world of crystals. For those of you joining on Facebook, welcome, and please, if you'd like to ask questions, participate in the question and answer session at the end, please do uh, click on that Zoom link so that you can uh, join in with that. So I think I've said enough, let's begin with this webinar. So the first thing to, to know about crystals, are how are they created? So the crystals are actually formed just underneath the Earth's, Earth's crust. And depending on the heat and how quickly they're cooled depends on the crystal that's formed. Also, what's in the earth, the soil, the rocks around in that area will depend on which crystal is formed. Now, that picture you can see on that slide is one of the most magnificent finds of the last 10 years. It's a crystal cave that was only discovered recently in Mexico. And those are quartz crystals. If you look to the, the left side of the picture, you'll actually see a man standing there. That gives you the, <laughs> the scope of how big these crystals are. And the researchers who went in to study this incredible cave actually were blown away. They could only stay in there for 20 minutes with special apparatus to breathe and special protective equipment because the power in there was so strong. The vibration, the frequency didn't allow us mere humans to stay in that cave for very long. So the researchers and scientists just go in and out for 20 minute sections, a very magical place. So these crystals are formed just underneath the surface of the earth usually by magna, um, so that the molten lava will come up and then cool. And it can take millions of years for crystals to be formed. This is why crystals are very much an earth energy. They're created by the earth and they connect us to the earth. And now we come on to the magical bit, crystal power. For you guys to actually understand the power of crystals, you need to do just one thing, and that is accept that everything is energy. We're just vibrating atoms, we're pushing out our biomagnetic frequency, as is everything else on this planet. To accept that is stage one in understanding the power and healing power of crystals. And science actually has known this recently. It's something since the 1930s to 50s that scientists were really starting to get hold of this fact that everything is just frequency that we interact with. So I love this quote from Telsa. It says, if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration. So once again, if we can just accept that us and everything around us is just frequency and vibration, then we'll understand how crystals can help heal us on an emotional, physical, mental and spiritual level. So crystals, you'll see I have a lot in front of me, this is just a few of the ones I have, are um, basically just 
physical, tangible energy forms. This crystal I have here is really special to me. My mum was born in Austria. Um, and in Austria, we have the most magnificent quartz crystals. And this crystal was actually dug up from one of the mountains where my mum was born. It travels with me everywhere. It's a quartz crystal. So these are just forms of tangible energy. And because it connects so much to the earth energy, we can actually um, use our personal vibration to connect with the crystal. And we can do that through our thought patterns, through our intentions, through the frequencies we put out through our thoughts. And by doing that, that connects us directly to the crystal and to the earth energy where they were formed. So this man I've got on the screen now, this was one of the biggest breakthroughs in respect of crystal power. His name is Marcel Vogel, and he was one of the scientists working at IBM. And they were actually growing quartz crystals in the lab so that they could use them in technology. So what he realized again in the 1950s, this was a really big era for understanding the effect of frequency and energy. What he actually understood while he was watching the crystal grows under the, uh, grow under the microscope, he saw that depending on his mood, depending on his emotions, it would change how the crystal would structure itself in its growth pattern. Now, this is just mind blowing. Nothing had been seen like this before at that time. He went on further. He got a little bit obsessed with this um, connection between thoughts, vibration, thought frequency, and the crystal growth. And he actually proved that you can store thoughts. You can store the vibration of your thoughts on a quartz crystal in exactly the same way at the time that tapes were used to record magnetic energy so that you could record sound or a voice. So this shaped crystal with the point is actually known as a Vogel crystal in honor of this incredible scientist who realized the power of storing thought vibration, thought frequency, thought intention in a quartz crystal. And something came um, in my newsfeed the other day, which blew my mind. The University of Southampton has recently managed to store um, the entire volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica on a crystal that's a disc about the size of, um, you know, five cents or 10 pence. And, and that's just incredible. A tiny sliver of quartz crystal can store terabytes of information and it will last for billions of years so as a result of the university of southampton's research and ability to store they're now going to store the history of planet earth on slivers of quartz crystal for future generations and perhaps alien species who knows <laughs> So here's the sciencey bit. <laughs> so what we've got here is a very crude diagram of how this works. I apologize for any scientists out there listening to me. Please forgive me. But this is how I can conceptualize the science behind the magic of um, crystal power. So what we've got here is this beautiful quartz crystal. And we're going to put some pressure into that crystal. And we do it by mechanical energy. Now our thoughts uh, frequency, uh, you know, everything we put out through our minds, through our thoughts, are mechanical energy. So I'm thinking in a thought and I'm putting that in. My intention is for that thought to imbue in this crystal. The crystal then does something amazing. It transforms that thought vibration into voltage, into electrical energy. And so I put in mechanical energy and it transfers it into electrical energy out into the universe. So this is how the magic of crystals work. Now, what's really cool about the Vogel crystal, what Vogel also proved, you see the tip on the top. So it's almost like it's got, it's, um, we actually call them crystal wands as well. It's actually got a tip. What Vogel found is when we put our thoughts into these quartz crystals, if it has a point 
all the energy will actually focus towards that point so we can even direct the electrical energy and later on when i talk a little bit about crystal healing you'll see how i use these ones in my healing sessions where the intention the healing energy is coming into the crystal and then it's directed through this point into my client's energy body creating a healing modality absolutely phenomenal another scientific principle that's really important to understand when we talk about crystal healing is the the law of physics to do with entrainment now what um scientists have proven and this goes back to the 16 it was 1665 the dutch scientist went into a clock shop and what he saw was that all the pendulums of the clock were vibrating in time. This was impossible that a grandfather pen clock pendulum and a small clock pendulum were completely synchronized. At the time, there was no scientific principle to explain that. Surely the smaller one should be faster than the large one. However, this scientist realized that and, and studied and researched and proved that the strongest vibration, the strongest frequency in an area will affect any other frequency. And whichever is the strongest frequency, everything else will entrain or synchronize into the exact frequency of the strongest one. So this is important to understand because when we're working with crystal energy, we're working with a very high vibration. So when we put crystal energy into our personal energy bodies, our personal energy bodies that are out of balance, that are not, sync that are not in flow, they will actually start to synchronize, or in physics we call it in train, they will start to entrain to the perfect vibration of this crystal. So this is how crystal healing works. It's not um, some, you know, some new age philosophy. This is science. And in fact, in the UK, the National Health Service has crystal healing <laughs> as one of their accepted holistic therapies to help people heal from a serious illness and disease. They actually recognize it as a modality that will improve the healing process. So um, I can't tell you how valuable working with Crystal is, whether on your own or if you come and see me or any other of our therapists at Illuminations, working with this high vibration. And since all of this work has gone on, we've also learned through science as well that crystals vibrate at different frequency. This will depend on their matter, their thickness and their color. So, you know, a dense color like this obsidian, a deep black will have a very, very different frequency to this rose quartz, which is a translucent pink. So each crystal has a very different frequency. And what's really interesting is that all these crystals have different connections to our frequencies. So they will match our personal vibration. They'll match our chakras, our seven main energy bodies that run down the center line. They'll match our thoughts. They'll match our intentions. So when we come to work with crystals, we can actually choose a crystal to amplify what we need to heal or what we need to manifest into our life. And this stuff works. I've been working with crystals a long time and every day my mind is blown by new stories from clients who have attracted into their life something that they haven't been able to attract before they worked with crystals. So crystals, and again, proven by science, they pick up every thought, every intention, they're able to cleanse negative vibrations and they can amplify all positive vibrations. They are just pure energy. They don't judge. They have no self-doubt. They have no self-worth issues. They are just pure energy that's able to cleanse, amplify and store what we need in life. 
And so how we can use crystals is to choose a crystal that connects to something that we want. I've just picked up um, a venture in here, a beautiful green stone. This is great for abundance, especially material abundance or wealth. And so what I can do is use this adventure in. I can ask it to help me. I can put my intention in that it will bring me an abundance of wealth. And, and then this will help manifest that intention, that desire that I have to bring that into my life. Um, so choosing the crystal to, that represents what you want is a great start. And then you empower it even further with your thoughts and intentions. So a lot to take in so far, but I hope I'm keeping you engaged and that you're really excited about going out and buying lots of crystals. So let's move on. Now, Einstein is one of my favorite scientists to quote because he is the ultimate genius scientist. And he also knew the power of crystals. And he knew that as long as the frequency we put out into the world, um, I'm sorry, when we put out the frequency into the world, we will attract that frequency back into our reality. And I love this quote from him. He says, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. So when I get critics who say this is mumbo jumbo, this is all hippie stuff, I love quoting Einstein and Telsa because they knew, they proved that when we put out a frequency, we will get that back. And that relates to creating our own realities. And crystals are one of the most beautiful ways we can help amplify that. So now I've told you a bit about how crystals work, how you can use them in your life and, and how they're so powerful in manifesting health, wealth, abundance, you know, creativity, everything that we want to be in flow and, and live a happy life, which is the reason we're here is to be happy. So now I'm gonna help you uh, learn how to choose a crystal. So crystals are beautiful. You may be able to see some of the lovely colors and shapes on my uh, table in front of me here. And um, it probably is the dazzling colors or, or the shapes or the patterns that draw you in to begin. And in fact, when people come and see me at Illuminations on JLT, it's really funny. The first thing they do is not look at me. They look at my table, which is full of crystals because it is magnetizing. It's exciting. It's beautiful to see these natural stones together. But when we choose a crystal, the reality is the crystal actually chooses you. It will know your vibration and you will know its vibration on such a subtle subconscious level. So even though you may go in with the intention, for example, of choosing a rose quartz to um, attract love into your life, you may end up coming out with a red jasper because you need to be grounded, to feel safe and secure. So you'll actually walk into a shop. Now, if, for those of you who've been to Illuminations, the shop there is insanely amazing. It's got every kind of crystal you could imagine. It's hard for me to walk past them every day. And when I come in, I actually pay attention to which crystal I'm most attracted to, whether it's a bracelet, a necklace, or the loose stones, because I know that my frequency is connecting to it. So whenever we're looking to choose a crystal, what we actually need to do is allow ourselves to come into a centered place and see which crystal we're attracted to as it actually will choose us. So once um, you've, you've gone into a place, you have crystals in front of you, you or you just want, you already have crystals and you want to know which one to work with at this time, it's very important to connect to your true self, connect to that, that place inside you that is non-judgmental, with no expectations, just that place where you want to come from a healing, surrendered, trusting place. And so what you can do is just quiet your mind and connect with your breath. It's always the best way to come into ourselves is follow that breath awareness. Once you find that you've calmed the mind, you've connected with yourself, 
and just gently blink your eyes open and look at all the crystals in front of you. Allow your intuitive self to be drawn to a particular crystal. So you'll come in, you'll just choose whichever crystal it is. I'm drawn now to this fluorite. And then if you don't know what the crystals mean, because there are literally hundreds and hundreds of crystals, then you can go and look that up. You can see what, what, what is this crystal about? And what will be really interesting is that it will be something that you need to consider, need to work on, something in your life that needs some help. So try not to go for your favorite color. Try and step away from the ego, which has already decided which crystal you think you should have because Google said it would be good for you in that respect. And just walk in with an open mind. Look at the entire display and see which stone stands out to you, which one catches your attention without judgment. And it will always be the right one. It's incredible. So once you've got your favorite um, stone, we actually have to work out, is it something that I can work with? So take your stone and place it in your left hand. The reason I say left hand is that's our receptive side. It's the left side that actually receives information. So place that crystal that you've been attracted to in your left hand and just hold it there. If it feels right, close your eyes. How does it feel to hold that crystal? Do you feel any calmness, serenity? Maybe you even feel hot or coldness as you hold that crystal in your left hand. Maybe some pulsations. Anything that is comforting or a movement, pulsation, vibration, and visualization means that this crystal is working for you. There's sometimes I'll go in and I think I need a stone and there's certain stones I can't even pick up. I'm repulsed by them energetically. So once that you, you um, feel that stone, think about your intention. Ask, why am I choosing this crystal? What's its purpose? And I promise you, you will just know when you have a stone that you can work with. You just let behind your expectations, trust, surrender, and you will know if you want to continue holding that stone or if you want to put it back. If you want to continue to hold it, that's a stone that can work with you right now. So once you've had it, as I just recently said, just look up the meaning. The Crystal Bible is a great book. Um, you can get a lot of information online as well, but just be a little bit aware with um, the internet. Obviously, several sites can give you several different meanings. The Crystal Bible is one of the books I always carry with me. Um, it seems to be spot on in my experience, but you'll find, you'll find the, the, the book, the information that you need that will be right for you at the time. And when you look up the meaning of the crystal, what it can help with in your life experience, you'll be blown away. So I thought I'd just go through a couple of stones with you now, just that interest. Maybe some of you have stones at home already and you're not really sure how they can help you in healing. So I'll just go through a few. So agate's a really common stone. It comes in hundreds of different colors. Um, they can look a bit mottled, and this is really good for strength and courage. They're protecting, they're balancing. They're really, they're good for kind of accepting emotions. So when you see agate, that's a really kind of generally good stone to have. And as I say, they come in a lot of different colors. So they're great for jewelry and also for decoration so that you can be looking at them all the time. Amethyst, one of the most powerful stones. Um, here it is in its tumbled form. I also have a nice big chunk of the raw amethyst, absolutely stunning. And so what amethyst does, it's actually really, really intuitive stone. It's all about balance and wisdom, connecting to your intuition. Very good for the third eye, in which case it takes you on that spiritual path. So if you feel that you're being over logic, over rationalizing, amethyst is a great one to bring you back into that intuitive side of yourself. Aquamarine, I don't have any here. Unfortunately, one of my favorite stones is great for meditation, calming the mind, clearing the mind, releasing anger, making positive changes. 
a venturine, very similar to jade in color. This is manifesting wealth and material abundance. Any black stone, um, I don't have tourmaline here. Oh, I do have a bit of tourmaline. There we go, a raw piece of tourmaline. Um, this is very, very good for grounding, releasing negative energy and also protecting from any negative energy coming towards you. We have carnelian. Oh, here we go, a beautiful orange stone. This is great for emotions, but it's also great for self-esteem, relationships, personal power, creativity. Also good if you want to lose a couple of extra pounds. It's really good for weight loss. Just holding it will help uh, get you into that weight loss uh, uh, energy and vibration. Citrin, beautiful yellow color. So the citrine stones, these are amazing for courage, motivation, decision making, all of those kind of real moving forward powers. So if you're feeling indecisive or want to make a decision on something, that's a great stone to choose. Clear quartz. This is one of my favorite crystals. This is the master crystal. It can manifest your dreams. It can clear your mind, connect you to all that is. It also will release any negativity, a negative energy from you and also stop any coming towards you. It's one of my favorite go-to stones for everything. We have fluorite, it's a very magical stone in itself. And so this one is great for um, getting rid of any confusions. <laughs> so it's really good for focusing the mind. So anyone who's studying or doing exams, fluorite's a great one. Um, red garnet, I don't have any here, but that's a nice bright red stone. It's very grounding, but also uplifting. And um, hematite, the, the volcanic stones, these are amazing. Again, they're really good for grounding. One of the most strong earth energies we have really gets you focused, really grounds you, and it releases not only negative energy, but the patterns relating to negative energy. Um, I don't have any jade here, but jade is the lucky stone. We know this, we find this a lot in jewelry, especially from um, China, they use a lot here. So jade, if you want luck, wear that. Moonstone, I have the smallest piece of moonstone <laughs> with me. And this is the miracle stone. This is the stone if you just want to connect to your destiny, find your life purpose very, very strong um, connection to your divine path. Lapis lazuli, this is a beautiful blue stone, really good for um, the insightful minds, but also um, connected to the metaphysical world and also communication as well. Malachite is a beautiful green stone. I don't have any here, but it can transform your life. It's good for um, manifesting unconditional love as well. Obsidian, one of my go-to stones. Um, this is one of the most grounding stones we have. Great for, um, uh, for um, overcoming stress and depression. It also calms fears. It takes all negative energy away from you and stops any coming towards you. Red Jasper, this is amazing. This is grounding. It's so good for um, if you're feeling that you're not manifesting what you truly need in your life, try a bit of red jasper. It will really help you get into your physical experience what you dream of. I think one of everybody's favorites, <laughs> rose quartz. This is the pink stone. It's connected to the heart chakra. It really does open up your heart to love. It heals wounds. It helps you find love, helps you self-love. It attracts any soulmates for those of you looking and it enhances relationships for you in relationships. Really strong connection to the energy of love. Uh, Rutilated quartz, I don't have any, but that's um, definitely an angel connection there. It's a white quartz with lots of um, lovely, like goldeny, almost like threads inside, a very magical stone, quite rare. Selenite, this also is an angel stone. Um, in um, the shop in Illuminations, they have some incredible, um, like almost like um, ornaments made out of this, angels and their beautiful spirals. So this stone is magical. If you want your angel connection, your divine, Guidance, selenite is definitely um, a healing stone to choose. 
smoky quartz. Um, no, I don't have a piece here with me uh, in Dubai, but this is very grounding, letting go, releasing fears, overcoming negativity. Tiger's eye, one of my favorites, just because it does look like a cat's eye, absolutely magical. It's really good for personal power, strength, willpower, motivation, achieving goals, looking at things from a positive angle. So if you're ever stressed out, if you're a bit lost because you don't have direction, grab a piece of tiger's eye that will help push you where you need to go. And finally, turquoise. And that's actually my birth stone, a very strong, powerful, protecting, uplifting and healing stone. Um, and it blocks psychic attacks or negative attachments. So I've just mentioned a few things there. Um, as I say, get a book, <laughs> look it up because there's so many stones. But those are just a few to give you an idea of um, how you can use stones for a particular area of your life. So um for the stone to work you just need to trust that the vibration of your chosen stone is going to help you it is going to get what you want and it is going to release the negativity it's the trust surrender and just letting the stone do the work that will be the all-powerful for you so once you've chosen your crystal you need to cleanse it and to do that i've given you a few ways here on on the screen um, you can get a bowl of sea salt. It must be sea salt, not iron, not table salt that you put on your chips. So sea salt, and you can just leave the crystal in there overnight, and that will be enough to um, to let it um, cleanse. You can also add water, so it becomes a soluble salt water mix. One thing on using water with crystals: certain crystals don't like water. Selenite's an example. It can start to erode a little bit anything with copper in such as turquoise also so just pay attention if you are leaving crystals overnight in water running water is great for cleansing your crystal the ocean as the waves come in a river that will work really really well only in an absolute emergency have i cleansed my crystal under a tap but if necessary, if there's nothing else around, it is kind of a last resort thing. That running water can remove any um, residual energy that doesn't belong to the stone from it. Other crystals can also clean. So clear quartz and the orange stone carnelian. Place your other crystals in a bag overnight and that will also cleanse your crystal of any energy that doesn't serve it anymore it will keep it in its natural vibration. Smudging using sage, palo santo, even natural incense like Nag Champa. You can just hold your crystals um, with the smoke just running over it, that will cleanse them. And then you have also the full moon, one of my favorite ways to cleanse my crystals. I place them in a basket, I put them outside when the moon is full. In the morning when I bring them in, they are shining like stars. So that is one of my favorite ways. The other way is not so likely in here in Dubai. When I lived in Thailand in monsoon, it was my one of my other favorite ways to clean my crystals. But a rainstorm is great, especially if there's thunder. That really empowers the crystal as well as cleansing them. So we've chosen our crystal. We've cleansed our crystal. Now we need to program our crystal. So to do this, we need to let the crystal know it's got a specific purpose, our intent. And it's best to cleanse your crystal, uh, sorry, to program your crystal straight after it's been cleansed. So what we need to do, this time we're placing it in our right hand. The reason it's the right is because the right side is our giving. So we want to give it our intention. Look at your crystal, focus all your attention on that crystal, connect to it. And then you simply need to think about the intentional use for the crystal and the intention you want to set. So remember, going back to the science, to Vogel, to Einstein, to Telsa, we just put the frequency of our thoughts, our intention into that crystal. It will store it. Science has proved this. 
and say to the crystal, I dedicate this crystal for the intention of, and then state your intention. And then the final part of the program in your crystal is to give gratitude. There is nothing like the high vibration of gratitude and being grateful to just seal that intention in. So now, all you have to do is connect to your crystal for that power and magic to happen. If you wear your crystal, it's really great. So bracelets, pendulum, uh, sorry, pendants, earrings, necklaces, um, you know, the, the mala, the uh, prayer beads I wear are actually uh, quartz crystal beads. You know, so anything that you can put on your body, it's gonna be constantly interacting with your frequency. And then your personal frequency, your vibration, your chakras, your meridians, your nadis, all these energy centers will start in training, start synchronizing with the crystals you've got in your energy field. So it's incredibly powerful. Other ways that you can uh, work with your now programmed powerful crystal is just display them, have them next to your bed, or next to you in your kitchen, wherever you spend some time on your desk, so that every time you look at that crystal, you're putting your intention again and receiving the power back. That constant connection will just make it more and more powerful. I like to have crystals in my drinking water. Here at home, um, I have crystal water everywhere. And you can choose the crystal. If you want to attract more love, put in some rose quartz. If you need more focus, you can put in some tiger's eye. If you need to remove negativity, put in some black stones. And then you can actually drink the vibration, the energy of the crystal. Um, it's, it's an incredible way to get the crystal power into your, into your energy body is drinking it through water. Water takes on memory. It takes on the vibration of the crystal. Again, this is proven by a Japanese scientist called Emoto. Phenomenal. Again, if ever you're in Illuminations, they've got incredible array of the crystal bottles. I have a picture here where they actually have a vocal crystal inside the drinking bottle. And then you, you put the water in, so you are just drinking the energy of that crystal. I mean, it's a really powerful way for you to be energized and manifest your, your heart's desires. Okay, I know I talk a lot. I'm going to keep going because it's so fascinating, but I'll just, um, I'll go through these slides a bit more quickly. Um, so birthstones are really interesting. They actually were first um, talked about in the fifth century. And what they actually do is uh, they just relate to the month that you were born. So I thought I'd just let you know uh, what birthstones are for each month. If you want to take a screenshot or a shot with your phone, feel free here. So each month has a different stone. Um, so as I say, if you want to take a shot, feel free now. I'm going to move on the slide. Okay, so how we work with birthstones. You can actually choose any the stones that relate to the, the month you were born, but a second way to work with birthstones is choose the stone from the month that we're in and then wear that stone. So we would be wearing the stone for March now, which is aquamarine. That will enhance all the positive energy towards you during the month of March. So not only wear your own birthstone, which is extremely great for positive vibrations in your personal energy body, but also wearing the stone of the month we're in will enhance positive energy to come towards you. And then we have our zodiac stone. So we all know our horoscopes. I'll just, um, so um, this is our sun sign or our horoscope sign. And this is where, um, the sun was present at the time of our birth, also known as sun signs. Um, and I'm sure all of you listening, you have interest in this kind of holistic stuff anyway, esoteric stuff. So you probably know your birth, uh, your zodiac sign, but I've just popped them on there just in case. So let's go through them quickly. So here are the ones for Capricorn. I'm gonna whiz through these. Please feel free to take a screenshot or with your phone. How zodiac crystals work, we each have personalities, reactions based on where the sun was when we were born. That creates how we act and respond in this world. 
All the crystals chosen will help either calm down or amplify the good and bad qualities in us. They will help us work better for ourselves as that star sign. So um, I'll zip through them. There's Capricorn, Aquarius. I hope I'm leaving them on long enough for you guys to take a snap if they relate to you. Pisces, this is the month we're in right now. So you sensitive Pisces, it's uh, really good for you to get some rose quartz here right now. <laughs> some moonstone will be good for you, I calcite too. <laughs> Aries, the ram. So you can work with all of these stones or just choose one that relates to the area of your personality or life experience that isn't kind of fulfilling you. On to Gemini, off to Taurus. Answer. Here's Leo, another fire sign. Virgo, Libra, very balancing. Beautiful colors there, Libra. Scorpio, my moon is in Scorpio. These stones are very good for me also to calm down that sting in my tail. And Sagittarius, I'm actually double Sagittarius, so double fire. A little bit of water <laughs> so all these stones are good for me um, and then we also have crystals for the chakras so a very simple way for you to know like i could talk for 20 hours on crystals non-stop as you probably gathered <laughs> my passion is quite great but a very easy way for you to know which crystals for the chakras is look at the colors the colors of the chakras are the rainbow red from the roots orange for the sacral, yellow for the solar plexus, green, or with crystals also the rose quartz, but green for the heart, we have blue for the throat, and then we have purple for the third eye. And for the crown, when it comes to crystals, we tend to go for the clears or the whites, like the opals and selenites. So whenever you're choosing um, crystals to help activate, balance, and block a particular chakra. And this is what I do in my treatments. I will choose stones that relate specifically to the frequency of that chakra. Once again, using entrainment, that frequency um, that's imbalanced will synchronize with the pure vibration or frequency of that crystal. You can also get these beautiful um, crystal, um, sorry, chakra balancing bracelets that have a couple of crystals that relate to each of the seven chakras, really great for balancing you at all times. Again, wearing crystals is a really great way to keep that frequency within your subtle energy body. And I want to talk just a little bit now about crystal pendulums. So um, any of you that have come, even for your free 30 minute consultation, so um, any of you that haven't come, please do come and see me. I do an analysis of your chakras using my rose quartz crystal pendulum. Now, this pendulum is incredible because the crystal, pure energy, it will come across your chakras and it will actually let me know if your chakras are active, underactive, overactive, even blocked. And at the end of that 30 minute consultation, I'll be able to basically give you a roadmap of what you need to do to start unblocking your chakras. And then that energy will also transfer into your life experience. It's my true belief that, um, that anything that, that goes out of flow in our life actually starts in the energy body. So if we can actually work on our chakras, know which chakras are blocked by using crystal pendulums. We can then unblock in the energy body before they turn into disease or disharmony, mental stress, emotional stress, you know, all these things that make us feel that life's not in balance and in flow. So working with crystal pendulums are absolutely magical, magically accurate, and can really guide you on your path to happiness. Um, I am gonna be running a course in the next couple of months dealing um, 
with using pendulums and crystals a much more in, like involved course where you'll actually get a lot more information and pendulums are a big part of that um yeah they're, they're a great tool so finally I've talked a lot. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I'd just like to tell you a little bit about how the crystal healing works. So whenever you go to see someone who works with crystals, um, then what, what's actually happening is we're working directly in your energy field, this subtle energy body. We're working on those principles of um, resonance, frequency attracts frequency and entrainment, that everything that's low or out of balance will entrain with the pure highest frequency. So using the pendulum, I'll actually run along your um, chakra centers and I'll work out which chakras are imbalanced, blocked, overactive, underactive. Also then moving on to the 12 main meridians, looking which of your meridians may be out of balance looking at which of your elements are out of balance. And when we look at all these things together, all these energy points on the body, we can then use the crystals to place in certain areas on your body in certain patterns um, and bring in healing energy, pranic, reiki, all that high healing energy into the body at the same time so that your personal energy body, any blockages, imbalances, will with all these modalities start to open up and entrain, creating beautiful flow for you in your life, in your health, in your relationships, in your career, in every aspect of your life. So I'm aware that I've talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to come and see me, I would be more than happy to um, meet you all in person at Illuminations JLT, uh, where I do my crystal healing, Reiki, I do chakra balancing, um, I can take you on a guided journey with the fairy oracle cards to work out your life's purpose and answer some questions about the past, present, future. I'm also a yoga and meditation teacher. So I hope you enjoyed um, listening to me. And now I am, we've got well, about 12 minutes for questions and answers. So please do feel free to unmute um, if you've got any questions. <laughs> hi, yeah, please speak. Is it? Hi. Hi, this is Yasmin. Hi, Yasmin. How are you? Very well. So, thank you so much. It was really interesting. Yes. I really enjoyed it. I'm very passionate for uh, energy, and this is my first uh, class. Perfect. So thank you so much. Well, but thank uh, you. I want to ask. Yeah. Huh? Thank you. You are. So one question, please. Um, how often should I do this healing uh, session? The healing sessions. Okay, so um, first of all, it's important to do an analysis, almost like a diagnosis to see where your energy body um, is at that time. Um, depending on the depth of the blockages, the energy imbalances will depend on um, how many sessions would work for you. There's no kind of one size fits all. However, when you bring in the modality of crystal with kind of um, the, the healing energy, straight away you will feel movement. Um, after just one session, you will already have, um, have got rid of any more superficial blockages um, and the energy will be flowing, the chakras will be open in sequence and in balance. Um, and then from there, at the end of the session, we will be able to work through how many more sessions you would need to get rid of the deeper blockages, like the emotional ones, the ones in the second chakra, the hips, kind of these emotional ones, the heart ones tend to be a bit deeper um, so they do often need a little bit more work. Personally, in my experience, I find around three sessions and um, people are back in their flow in life. They're working with crystals on their own um, and they're keeping the balance, which is the most important thing. For me, it's not about that quick fix. For me, it's about creating a way for you to have a long-term sustainable, healthy flow in your energy body, which then resonates into a healthy flow of your life path. But for, after one session, you'll feel amazing. After three, 
a lot of those blockages, even the deep ones, will have left your energy body. Um, and then it will be working, um, you know, on what is needed on an individual basis. But simply working on your own with crystals will already start releasing any um, flow issues, any imbalances that you have. Is it as easy as it seems uh, to uh, do this, uh, uh, to transfer your intentions to the crystal? 100%. It's absolutely proven by science. We found this out because an old scientist who was bored in his lab was watching his crystals grow. And he realized that just watching them without even realizing he was changing their growth pattern. He was changing their form and their structure. So all you need to do is look at that crystal and let it know. This work by the University of Southampton that I just read about recently blew my mind. It can store a terabyte on a tiny disk of uh, like terabytes and terabytes on a tiny disk of quartz crystal. It's magical. It, it stores it. It's so simple. It's the intention. We put out every thought we have is just a frequency. And I think this is the most important thing to get our heads around is like a thought is a frequency. It does leave my, my mind, it does leave my physical body and it does enter this, this universal energy around me. So as long as I know that that's a frequency and my intention is to direct it into this memory keeping piece of stone, that's all it takes. And that's the thing, this is not rocket science, it is so simple. And the ancient yogis knew this millennia ago there's, um, you know, if you look back at the ancient um, Egyptians, for example, they had turquoise and other crystals everywhere in the, in the pyramids, in the tombs, because they knew how important they were. Um, the ancient yogis knew how to transfer information onto crystals 5,000 years ago. The problem is we've just forgotten. And because we're such complicated thinking creatures now, we can't actually accept that a simple thing like looking at my crystal and saying, you are going to manifest love, joy, happiness and abundance in my life, that that can work. But I promise you it works. Um, I used to be a lawyer. Everything I talk about is evidence based. It's all first hand experience or experience from my clients. And it, the power is so great. It's phenomenal. It's the trust, the surrender that is the hardest thing to begin with. But once you start, um, as you see, it can become a little bit um, obsessive. <laughs> Thank you so much. And by the way, I'm from Egypt. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Any questions from anyone else? Hi, I have a question which I put in the chat. Um, it's two okay. questions in one or three. Okay. Which crystals should never be placed near each other? And okay. which crystals should I place in my bedroom and next to my bed? And okay. which ones should I always carry around with me? <laughs> Okie dokie. So no problem placing crystals together. It's all about the intention. So um, you will read it, but you know, there's certain people that say don't place certain crystals with other words. I, I have never had any problems whatsoever placing loads of crystals together. I travel, do retreats around the world. So my crystals are always together. I cleanse them in a big bowl together. Their power is their own. They're different frequencies. So they're not going to spoil the other frequency by being together. Um, and because they're pure positive energy, there is no such thing as a negative dark crystal. They only exist in Disney, those. Um, all crystals are high vibration, so they raise us up to high vibration. So um, putting crystals together, there's no problem whatsoever. In respect of by your bed, well, that depends on what you want. <laughs> so, um, if you're looking for a certain thing in your life, attracting it, magnetizing it, getting it to you, I like to have those crystals all around. So I think you can never have too much love. Um, around my, my apartment, I have rose quartz everywhere. I have um, clear quartz everywhere. That's my connection to the divine. It's the master crystal. It's the amplifying crystal. 
So work out which crystal you need for whatever you're looking to attract and put that near your bed because the first thing you'll see and the last thing you'll see. So that intention, that frequency you're putting out will be amplified um, as you're sleeping. And um, when you wake up, it will be the first thing. If you're looking to sleep, then crystals like amethyst are really good for sleeping. Even the dark stones, the black stones will be good because they'll remove any low vibration. They absorb that from you. Um, but I do think that amethyst is a really good kind of um, a sleeping crystal if that's what you're looking for, very calming. Um, you'll be naturally drawn to the crystals that you, you need near you. If you're looking for dreams and connecting to that angelic realm, the desire, the divine then like the opals are really nice the selenite and it also they look calming um around but um yeah any crystal i'll change the crystals by my bed depending on on what i need at that time if it's a bit more vitality and um, if i'm feeling a bit under the weather i'll put some red jasper so it really doesn't matter what you put it's the intention and knowing that the more you look at it the more your frequency is going into it so the more it's going to magnify out so the more of what you want is going to come back and carrying the crystals exactly the same thing i have a small piece of adventuring that's the money stone i have a tiny piece in my handbag in my purse um, i've got rose quartz hearts everywhere um, it's quite embarrassing if at uh, you know Carrefour they ask if I've got any change. I usually pour out a handful of uh, hearts and crystals <laughs> with my change. Um, so if you want to be protected, again the dark stones will be good for you. And um, if you want to be strong, you can carry some um, tiger's eye with you. Um, if you feel the afternoon slumps, getting something like a red jasper will help you um, get over that and have that, that kind of life vitality you need to get, get through the day. So again, it, it's absolutely, you can carry any of the stones anywhere. The other thing I like to do is get a flat stone. Any flat stone is good and you can hold that in your hand. Um, we have acupressure points on our thumb that will actually... Um, deactivate our nervous system, activate our parasympathetic system. And by simply rubbing that stone, not only am I getting the vibration and the manifestation from this stone, I'm also like creating happy, happy hormones in my mind. I call it worry stones when we work like this. So having stones in your pocket on your desk and just rubbing them will also kind of help um, get that healing power from them. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Thank you. Cool. Does anyone else got anything to ask? Um, hi, my name is Deepa. Hi. hi. Um, how do we know which crystal or gemstone we need at any point of time? This is your intuition. Okay. So the important thing is to just trust. So when you go, if you've got your own crystals or if you go to a crystal shop to buy some, it's that first crystal that catches your eye. It's that intuition, that all knowing without knowing why you're attracted to it. Um, so it's getting out of the head thinking, oh, I must get the, um, the lapis lazuli because I need to communicate this afternoon in the meeting. So it's getting out of what you think you need and actually walking in connecting to yourself, opening your eyes and just go into that first crystal that draws you in. That's the crystal energy that your energy body, your true self, your soul is seeking right at that moment. So in a course of a day, you could actually work with several different crystals depending on what you need at that particular point. So it's trusting that all knowing self, your intuition. Um and uh, do we need multiple crystals? Um, you know what, it's one of those things. Um, if you're looking for just a couple of crystals, I always travel wherever I go with a clear quartz and an obsidian. The, cl the clear quartz is the master crystal. It will do whatever I ask. It's the one that's gonna just take on my vibration. It will amplify what I need. The black stone will absorb any negative energy from me or coming towards me. So those are my two carry stones and I always have a piece of rose quartz with me because we always can do with a bit more love for ourselves as well as to project that out to others. 
So um, if I was going to choose two stones, I would recommend a clear quartz and a obsidian or a black stone. Um, but um, what will end up happening, no doubt, is that once you start on one or two stones, you end up with a lot of stones because they are just wonderful to have around. And they're pretty. Perfect. And last, how do I meet you? Is there a phone <laughs> number or something? Yeah, so I work at Illuminations on JLT, okay. so please feel free to get in touch with them by their website. Um, they have phone number and contact details there, and I would love to meet you all too. It'd be really great to uh, talk, talk to you guys in person and let you experience this power because it really is magical and it's available to everyone. You know, this is not mystical. It's, it's, it's what it is. It's science. You know, it works. So, um, yeah, I would love to meet you too. I'd be honoured. Come, come have a free consultation. Um, I'd love to meet you, please. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else? Hi, Ingrid. This is Mira. Hi there. I am from South Africa, so unfortunately I can't pop in to meet you, but oh. I would have loved to. <laughs> Um, I just want to know where I can get more information on crystal grids. Um, I saw a documentary um, a while ago yeah. about um, people that erect crystal grids um, to make their homes peaceful Absolutely. and like that. So um, that fascinated me and I don't seem to be able to find um, larger crystal grids. I, I know that there are crystal grids that you can print yeah. out and use, yes. but I'm interested in larger crystal grids to erect around the house and the garden. Beautiful, yeah. I mean, so basically, um, you know, I, I don't have any available yet. I am actually writing a whole course on this. So um, I'll make sure that, that maybe we can connect and I, you know, on, on that, I can give you that information there. But any, the, the grid, it's a geometric, it's sacred geometry at the end of the day. So even a small pattern, you can make as big as you want. So if you go, um, now I would just recommend going on Google and if you're looking for creating, you know, um, a certain atmosphere in certain areas of your house, then you can actually just amplify that and you can bury the stones under the earth. So um, by putting them under the earth in these patterns is super powerful because they are from the earth. Um, okay. So I think it doesn't, the, the, the grid itself, find, if you go on Google and look up, for example, Harmony Grid, Crystal Grid, okay. and you can make okay. it as big as you want. Okay, great. Now I understand. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Because, um, yeah, that was yeah, and really good. Yeah, and it's really good to bury them. Um, you know, it's really funny. Um, well, you know, if I, I'll throw crystals everywhere, whenever I move into a house or if I go and visit my, you know, friends and stuff, I'll be throwing little crystals all around their gardens. <laughs> so, you know, like it's really great. Crystals love being back in nature as well. So, um, and the power will be incredible. I'm, I'm happy you're going to do that. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm visiting my sister um, close to the Drakensberg um, over the weekend, and there's an amazing crystal shop in a very small touristy town. So that's my number oh, one destination. Now yeah, now you know what to do. No, 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 go in and let yourself choose them. So just work out what you want them for. And then when you go in, say, okay, now I'm going to look for the crystals that will work well in harmonizing my home then walk around, pick them. Now I want the crystals that will work well on keeping, you know, love and peace at my door and then you find the crystals. Fantastic. So uh, just keep centering yourself and be drawn, but not because you like the color, because you know it's the stone. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much. That, that really helps me a lot. And thank you very much. It was an awesome presentation. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And um, thank you for coming, for joining all the way from South Africa. That blows my mind. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm really honored. I'm really, really, uh, I learned so much tonight. Thank I'm you. So happy. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So are there any more questions? We are about to wrap up, but does anyone have something? that they really need to know. <laughs> no, we all good. 
Okay, well, everyone, thank you so much again. It was my absolute pleasure and honor to get to share my passion with you. And like I say, please come see me. I'm offering three free 30 minute consultations. I've just moved to Dubai, so I'm even offering 25% discount of all my sessions right now for the, for the month of March. So um, please take advantage of that and, um, and come and see me and come and meet these magical stones in person. <laughs> so until I meet you, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Bye. Bye.